Hi everybody, this is Sheila Aliens. Today is Wednesday, July 6, 2011. So a 7.8 earthquake just happened in the Kermatic Islands, which is off the coast of New Zealand. That is a big earthquake. But what I wanted to show you guys is that this earthquake was predicted in a video posted on June 27th by the Bar Caroler. And I just thought that was pretty weird. All right, here's that video of the prediction of this earthquake. Much love. Greetings. This is a volcano and earthquake watch for June 29 through to July 3. We have seen a stepping up in seismic activities over the last three to four days. I do expect with a very large coronal hole formation looming, there is a strong possibility of a 7.2 earthquake during this watch. Now looking at Cygnus Streamer, this is showing a low intensity coronal mass ejection released on the 25th of June, and it does appear that it may be brushing the Earth's magnetic field sometime on the 28th or 29th of June timeframes. This may coincide with a stepping up in solar wind speeds, and it could also produce a seismic shock, which may lead to a significant seismic event felt here on Earth. We now look at the latest telemetry from ACE. We get to see significant changes in solar wind speeds over the last 24 hours, where solar winds were at 580 kilometers a second, down to levels of 460 right now. During this same time frame, density and temperature have significantly decreased. That's an indication that the coronal hole speed stream has rotated away from the Earth facing position and its effects are starting to wane. I do believe that with these changes, Solar wind speeds will continue to decline in the coming days and that will produce conditions fairly ripe for a significant earthquake. The GOES X-ray flux model is showing minimal activities. This is mainly due to only having five numbered active regions on the solar disk at this present time. It is worth noting that we will be losing three of these regions over the next 24 hours or so as they turn the west limb. We're now looking at the solar terrestrial activity report via solar.info and focusing on the northern hemisphere where we do see a fairly significant looking coronal hole formation that will be in the Earth facing position in the coming days. I do feel there is a strong likelihood of two significant earthquakes embedded within this coronal hole, and that will be the main focus of my watch. We're now looking at the Hanode XRT with Solar Monitor, and we get to see these coronal hole features as seen on this service. Now, the last coronal hole formation that has moved across the Earth facing position and produced a fair amount of significant seismic events was fairly dark and deep, as we can see in this image. It is worth noting that the new coronal hole formation, although this image is two days old, we do get to see that it does look quite similar. And that's a strong indication we may be seeing one or two significant seismic events during this watch. Now looking at the 193 angstrom with Solar Monitor, we get to see this fairly large looking coronal hole formation a little bit more clearly. And there are some regions within this coronal hole that I will be plotting and mapping as potential areas that could be at risk for a significant earthquake. It is worth noting that a few days prior to these images, a significant filament eruption occurred in this region, and it has changed the composition of this coronal hole slightly. Now looking at the SDO composite, we get to see this very large coronal hole and some active components associated. We do get to see an upliftment in some areas, and these are the main areas that I've targeted, and this area here does look to be quite active, and I am quite concerned about this region. Now having a close up view of this coronal hole with the 304 angstrom, we do get to see some interesting features associated and fair amounts of movement in and around the 27 degrees latitude region. We can also see the emergence of a ring like formation within this coronal hole, and that does indicate to me of a significant event in and around this region. Now targeting regions that I feel could be at risk for a significant earthquake during this watch, and the main region sits at 23 to 26 degrees north latitude. And the main region would be Taiwan, and on the opposite end of the Philippine Sea and plate boundary, the Volcano Islands. I do feel like there is a significant potential of an event in and around this region during this watch. My second area of concern is the region of India, and more specifically the region of Gujarat. The Gulf of California will be my third area of concern for this watch. And my final area of concern will be the region of Yunnan, China. Now looking at the outgoing long wave radiation anomaly, this is showing parts of the globe that could be susceptible of some significant seismic events during this watch. Now this is a five day moving average and we generally look for regions that are shaded in darkish green. 
Now the main area for this week is showing up in the region just east of Luzon, Philippines. This is a significant signature and perhaps the, the largest that I've seen for the last three months or so. We also have another signature around the Comanic Islands, also around the region of Carlsberg Ridge, and India is showing up for its first time. We also have some new regions that are starting to show, and that's around the New Madrid fault line. And that's a little bit of a concern. We also see a region around central Alaska, which is starting to show. But the main region of focus would be the region of Luzon, Philippines. We're now starting to see some interesting activities, as shown on the TEC global map. This is showing some anomalies stretching from Philippines all the way up to Japan, and we haven't seen these sorts of features since March. And finally, we'll have a look at the vertical ionospheric delay. This is showing an interesting anomaly that hasn't been seen for a month or so, and this is of most concern, as the last time we had these readings was in March as well. There are some celestial influences that may play a role during this earthquake watch. July 1st sees two alignments with Mercury. I do feel that these alignments may contribute or enhance to some seismic events on this day. Jupiter, Mercury, Saturn form an alignment, and Mercury, Sun, Uranus form an alignment. It is worth noting that back in 2004, Indonesia received a 9.1 earthquake and resulting tsunami. Three months after this event, an 8.6 earthquake was recorded in the same region. That would put the region of Japan at significant risk for a major event, as this very large coronal hole does cover this latitude. So this is the main area of concern for me. I do feel that there is a potential that Japan may receive a fairly powerful earthquake during this watch. And that's my volcano and earthquake watch for June 27. 2011. Annotations will be added during and at the end of the video. Thanks for watching.